Hello there and uh, welcome back to my new video. So in this video I am going to show you how to create this uh, awesome uh, countdown timer animation or actually a stopwatch animation since we are actually counting from zero. Uh, anyhow, uh, here I have already prepared the one project so we are not going to start from scratch. Instead uh, I'm going to go through this uh, code uh, step by step and explain you how we actually achieved this uh, animation. So the first thing, let's first start with our main view model, in which we have created the logic to actually count those seconds. Now here we have only one variable, seconds, and then we have specified here uh, basically one range from 0 to 100. And that's the exact same range which we are going to count in our application. Now, uh, after we have specified this um, actual range, then I have called this uh, as sequence function. And the reason why I have called this uh, sequence function is because I want to return uh, each and every second from this uh, range when it's uh, being iterated. Which means that those numbers will be initialized lazily. Anyhow, after that, we are basically converting that as a flow. And then we are mapping that flow. Now inside this map we have just one logic in which I have specified that I want to add here one zero in front of the number if we are uh, using numbers from zero to nine. So if you're wondering uh, why have I done that, uh, let me show you. So now I'm going to comment out this uh, actual map and I'm going to specify here only one uh, zero as an uh, initial value for our seconds. Let me just run this uh, application one more time. So now we are starting from zero, so one, two, three, and so on. And after we reach uh, number nine, uh, then you're going to see a slightly uh, alignment change uh, whenever we go uh, with a number uh, which is higher than uh, number nine, because number nine has only one digit, and uh, all numbers after that contains uh, two digits. And that's why we have seen that uh, strange uh, animation of our number 9 moving on the left side. So that's why I wanted to specify here uh, one more zero in front of those uh, numbers that start with uh, 0 or 9. And of course uh, after this uh, map I have called uh, on each function so that I can specify the actual delay of uh, 1 second. And that's how our uh, stopwatch will actually work. Now let's go back to our main screen. So this is just a regular screen uh, which in this case contains only one uh, uh, variable seconds that we are observing from our uh, main view model. Now below that we have just one column and on the center of that column uh, we have this uh, animated content composable function that contains this uh, text. Now animated content composable function is a special function that will allow us to animate uh, our content whenever the target state changes. And in this case our target state is this uh, seconds variable that we are observing from our uh, main view model. Now whenever that happens, whenever that change happens within our seconds variable number, uh, then basically we are recomposing this uh, text with the animations that we have specified under this transition spec uh, parameter. Now this uh, content lambda of our animated content will provide us the actual target value that we have specified right here. And that's how we are displaying those uh, numbers to our text composable. There you go. And the most important part here in our main screen is uh, this uh, add animation function that uh, I have created down below. So this function contains only one parameter which has a default value of uh, 800. So that's the actual duration which I have specified for uh, each and every animation here in this function. And this function uh, returns uh, one uh, content transform which is needed because we are using here uh, this um, uh, with uh, infix function. Now this uh, with infix function uh, will allow us to create this uh, content transform by specifying the enter and the exit transition animation. So those uh, two animations uh, will run uh, simultaneously, like you have already seen in our application right here. Uh, anyhow, uh, as you can see the first uh, enter animation which this uh, with function will allow us to specify. Let me just open that um, source code of this function. So as you can see uh, this uh, with function is an infix function and the value on the left here is the actual enter uh, animation and the value on the right side of this uh, with uh, infix function is the actual exit animation. Okay, now uh, our enter animation is a slide in vertically animation combined with a fade in animation. Now all animations here uh, have the same animation spec of a tween and the same duration as well. Now uh, this uh, slide in vertically uh, function accepts uh, one more parameter named the initial offset y. 
and this is the lambda that will provide us the actual height of our content. And here for this uh, slide in vertically, I'm returning uh, that uh, same height. And also we are using just a simple fade in animation. So whenever we um, launch our application, you're going to see that uh, the actual enter animation is a slide in because those numbers are actually sliding in from the bottom to the center of this uh, actual screen. And we also have this uh, fade in animation, which means that those items uh, are actually fading in uh, from the bottom. And for our uh, slide out animation or our exit animation, we are sliding those uh, numbers uh, all the way on the top, right? And in that case, we are combining this uh, slide out uh, vertically with a fade out this time, okay? And only one more thing here, uh, we are actually not returning uh, the actual height, we are returning a minus height. Because if I don't specify here a minus height, let me show you uh, what kind of a result uh, we are going to get. So this animation will also look uh, cool, okay, so there we go. Now we don't uh, have that uh, actual uh, animation where our numbers are actually uh, sliding out on the top. In this case, they are basically jumping around uh, to the center and on the bottom. So this animation is also a cool animation. And uh, that's just another approach of using uh, and combining those uh, two animations in this uh, function. Uh, anyhow, now I'm going to just uh, set it to... Uh, minus height as it was before and the uh, last uh, thing which i want to show you here is uh, this um, uh, size uh, transform function so as you can see our add animation function is returning a content transform because of this uh, with uh, infix function and on that uh, content transform we are using this uh, using function that will allow us to specify a size transform now this size transform accepts uh, multiple parameters from which the most important one is a clip. Now here I have specified uh, that clip to be true, which is a default value. And that's why uh, we are not going to see those numbers um, uh, showing uh, uh, on the bottom or on the top uh, outside of this uh, actual text. However, if I now specify here a false, uh, then let me show you what kind of uh, animation uh, we are going to get. So now uh, those numbers uh, will actually cross the boundary of our uh, text composable, okay? Because we have specified this uh, clip to be false. And that's why we can see those numbers even outside of this uh, actual uh, box, okay? So uh, basically that's how this animation uh, actually works. It's uh, quite simple and uh, really interesting and amazing to work with. I will put the link of this uh, source code uh, down in the video description, so no worries there. Also, uh, be sure to comment down below and uh, like this video if you find it uh, helpful, of course. And uh, see you the next one.